now we're going to talk about how we can measure and how we can improve our vagus nerve activity. So I want to kind of lead off with my philosophy and how I take care of people. So I have a philosophy of resilience and a philosophy of anti-fragility, meaning that in my view, our job as doctors isn't necessarily to protect you from every single thing that could cause you harm. My job as a doctor is to create a resilience and anti-fragile mindset so that your body can encounter these different stresses and we know that your body can bounce back from being exposed to that stress. So this is a quote from Dr. B.J. Palmer, who was one of the original upper cervical chiropractors. He actually founded and developed upper cervical chiropractic. I love this quote. He said, while other professions are concerned with changing the environment to suit the weakened body, chiropractic is concerned with strengthening the body to suit the environment. And it's really a different paradigm of healthcare because even in a lot of our holistic healthcare philosophies, a lot of this is still driven by this fact that like, you know, we need to avoid viruses, we need to make sure that everything is super clean and sanitary, we need to avoid all these toxins. And the truth of the matter is we don't live in a world that is free of those things. And if we live in an existence where we're never exposed to those things, the next time we're exposed to it, we are still just as likely to get sick from that exposure. And this is not to say that if you have celiac disease that you should go and expose yourself to gluten. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we know that there are things that are super toxic that we should probably avoid at all costs. We know that things that are toxic in the margins that are dependent on the dose and that it's up to us to mediate that dose but not necessarily get rid of that altogether. The same thing applies to stress. So we could choose to live a stress-free life by going to the Himalayas, living with Buddhist monks, eating the purest, cleanest food and water, meditating every single day, going to sleep at 8 o'clock, waking up at sunrise, and living this perfect ascetic life, and maybe we'll live to 100 if we do all those things. But that's not necessarily a practical way of, to live in a practical existence that we have. My counter to that is, we know what type of environment that we're going to live in. Maybe we should construct an environment and a body that can survive the environment that we live in and thrive in the environment that we're living in based on the tools and the know-how that we have. And part of that is not just avoiding the stress, because one of the things that we talked about before is that some of the things that stress us out the most are things that we actually need. So our job might be something that is paying us a lot of money, and we don't want to leave the job even though it stresses us out because it's going to unlock our chance for an early retirement. For some of us, our biggest stressor are the people that we love the most. It's going home to our families, which we love to death, but sometimes they just drive us crazy because they tell us to do things that we don't necessarily want to do or there's miscommunication that's involved. We don't want to get rid of our families, we just want a better way of being able to handle and deal with the stress that some of them might provide on us.